Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here uh, in the woods just off of the, the trailhead. Uh, I was able to uh, get my uh, get my resupply done. The nice lady at the uh, hotel uh, brought me down and, and dropped me off, and and uh, I kind of had breakfast down there and and got a deli sandwich for lunch and uh, and uh, some food and got, ate a yogurt and got some Gatorade in me and. Uh, a nice man came up and started talking about uh, about the trail, and I, uh, I bummed a ride from him. So he was nice enough to bring me back up here. So um, it's about 9:40 or so. Um, I was hoping to be done with all of that and back up here by 10. I'm glad I didn't have to walk up. It seemed like it was about a more like a mile and a half, almost two miles of a road walk. That was. It's already hot today. It's going to be. It's going to be 90 up at altitude. 87 I guess really up at 1500 feet so it's gonna be a scorcher today so uh, I'm enjoying my nice dry clean clothes for th the next half hour and then after that they'll be all wet again but that's just life um, at least it'll take a couple of days before they really start to stink <laughs> uh, I ditched my uh, Cabela's uh, the liner socks that I bought. I, I ended up getting some Fox River at the, at the Outfitter. So I've got those on today and see how they do. The, the Cabela's ones just, I don't know, they just, they just were, they just uh, stretched out and bunched up and, uh, you know, they were nice and soft and everything, but uh, functionally they, they, they were not doing what they were supposed to do. So anyway, uh, ankles and feet just still, still kind of hurt. It's kind of sore this morning. Of course, I, that's probably going to be the the way it is until the end of the, the trail here since I understand the yeah the rocks might lighten up but then they start back up again in New York and, and of course up in the, the whites and everything so all right uh, let's go get this done it's the uh, oh it's the 18th of May it's day 48 all right let's go hike on I made the climb up always nice to have a pretty view when you make a climb this is the Culver Fire Tower, and unlike most of the fire towers in the south that are seem to be more abandoned, this one obviously is currently in use. Got radios, power to it. A little windy, but it feels good. Got a little rain coming tomorrow. Not too much. I guess even that bird thinks this is a good water source. Well, um, I got water there by uh, where the bird was getting uh, <laughs> its bath. Uh, came up here to, I was gonna head down to the shelter, but I heard a lot of voices down there. And sure enough, there's about eight or nine day hikers that came hike, hiking up. So I just found myself a nice rock over here with this little campsite. And, and uh, had lunch, and uh, it was kind of nice. I because I was at the market, I had a breakfast sandwich, bacon, egg, and cheese sa breakfast sandwich that I packed out. Got to have some real food for lunch. Um, this is uh, the shelter I'm talking about is the uh, uh, Gren Anderson Shelter at uh, 1325 Northbound in the AWOL Guide, and. Uh, the, I met a couple that was southbound. They liked the shelter. They stayed here last night. Um, so I'm heading back here to the trail. We'll start heading north. I'm carrying three liters of water. I went ahead and um, may have gotten rid of one of my water bottles too soon because I, I looked like we were getting to an area where we didn't have to carry quite so much. And of course, they you know, I'm looking at it going, okay, well, the, the next place where I'm gonna stop tonight is 5.8, but the water is 0.6 down a steep trail. So, I may, uh, I may stop a little shy of that for tonight at a pond, uh, but I don't like, as you know, I don't like getting water in a pond so if I can help it. Uh, but. That's may, that may be what I have to do. 
So I'm gonna keep going to the shelter or just stay there. We'll have to see how the, the day progresses and how the rocks are actually. So I would say the, uh, the trail's not been too bad. There's been periods of rocks and periods of relief, I guess, where there haven't been many. It's been kind of going back and forth. I hope that means it's starting to quote unquote thin out a little bit. That would be nice. Ooh. One thing I had for lunch that I may be regretting here is a, for dessert I packed out a an iced honey bun, 480 calories. Whoa! So I think I might be uh, in for uh, those crashes if I'm not careful. Probably shouldn't have done that, or should have maybe saved it for a dessert a little bit down the down the trail here. <clears throat> All right, some more more rocks, but they're not too bad here. There's enough of a side path here to get on, and that's the. I've been thinking about it. Um, it may be a little bit hard on the Civilian Conservation Corps because I bet a lot of these trails that are like this, they didn't even do because if you remember right, a lot of the AT was road walking and over time they've, you know, they've purchased trail and moved it up. And I wonder if some of these places like this where there's no, there's no water breaks that have been built uh, I wonder if they just uh, literally, when the ATC and the government bought up more land and they just came out and you know, did their surveys, put blazes on trees and, and kind of sick the clubs on taking care of the trail and, and a lot of that initial trail building didn't happen, I'm suspecting. And then with that came erosion and with the erosion, the rocks got worse. I'm just thinking, I'm speculating, I don't have any, any idea if that's correct or not. Maybe somebody that uh, has lived up here in this area. I do remember reading in Earl Schaefer's book, Walking with Spring, and by the time even he walked, a lot of the trail way up here in the north was, uh, was overgrown and not being maintained. You know, you can only do so much with civilians, or excuse me, with volunteers. You know, you, you can only ask, you can't tell. If you've ever been in a totally voluntary organization, as a leader, trying to get things done, it's like, sometimes it's like pulling eye teeth out. I.e., trying to find dads to go out to be adult supervisors at scout camp. It's like crying out loud, it's your son. Your son's out there. Aren't you gonna, don't you wanna go <laughs> be part of his scout experience? Hmm, I think I'm gonna go around this bog. gonna keep heading north here. The guy warned me, the guy Bob who gave me my ride this morning warned me about uh, copperheads. Oh uh, yeah I found a tick on me uh, after my shower last night or the remnants of a tick. A very small one which is bad. The smaller ones the deer, the deer, the deer female is the one that carries Lyme disease. It uh, looks like maybe because it was underneath my my pant, and near an area where I had some like, like like bug bites that I may have scratched through the pant a couple of times yesterday, 
those bug bites and may have uh, killed it even though it didn't detach and its legs were gone uh, and uh, anyway so we'll see if it uh, I'll kind of have to keep an eye on that area and see what happens I tried to look for that little red dot that the female deer tick supposed to have but I couldn't really couldn't really find it the thing was so freaking small uh, maybe if I had a magnifying glass I might have been able to but I put it on a little piece of tape and stuck it on the inside of a baggie this uh, my repair kit so if I end up do getting sick maybe I can at least you know maybe a lab can look at the remnants of the tick and tell whether or not it had Lyme disease or whatever but I'll be optimistic that uh, that it wasn't on me long enough since I had checked myself pretty good the last two nights because of having uh, you know the tick in the tent on the tent and then the next night I had a tick on the tent I didn't tell you about that one as, long, as well as a couple on me as I hiked especially when I had to do that when I got off and accidentally started following a deer trail I got back to the AT I looked down and I think there was a couple, couple of ticks crawling around those little, those little suckers are fast too with their little legs in Virginia there was an infestation one year when I went up with the scouts the scout camp and uh, this is back when I was in a kind of post special ops still running a lot and uh, went out on a trail while they're all doing their merit badges running and I mean I looked down and there was probably 30 or 40 ticks on my shoes my shoelaces you know all working their way up on my socks and and I looked down and on all the branches all the leaves like here you know every every place there's a, a leaf or a branch near the trail had ticks on them and they were they were they had their little arms out kind of waving like come here come here you know trying to grab a hold of me because I guess I could sense the the heat from my body and they were literally putting their about half of their they'd be right on the edge of the plant you know the legs on one side were holding them on and legs on the other side were reaching out in this kind of a waving motion trying to to grab a hold of anything that came by and uh, that was the last time I went out and ran on that, uh, that scout camp out that was back when because my boys were in scouts and the military is pretty good about giving you free leave it's called permissive TDY to go do things like scouts and scout camps so I was usually always one of the one of the fathers that were the continuity that was there all the time Do a whole lot with scouts anymore since my my own sons are, are grown. Help out a little bit now and then in church with it, but uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed it. I was an Eagle Scout. Both my boys were Eagles. showing up as a water source at all on any of the guides oh man look at this more rocks <clears throat> the last I heard is somewhere around high point is it State Park is when the rocks are supposed to finally give way so we'll see if that's true all right everybody see you later bye all right this is Sunrise Mountain it's uh, at 13 24.7 on the AWOL Nobo for this year it's 
there's no camping under the pavilion. And I can see why it would be very, very tempting. This is a really nice pavilion. So I gotta sit down for a minute since there's a bench. Somebody did put it here for me after all. Well, honestly, not too much different than punch bowl. And I had to drink out of that. Definitely want a treat though. Definitely want a treat. Okay, there was a note and gut hook uh, that uh, on the 1st of May, so that was just three weeks ago, uh, Alf, the caretaker at the next shelter, had plenty of water cached in a in the bear box. So I think I'll keep going. Plus I didn't really see any place to camp, to be honest with you. And if there was, it's going to be a mosquito haven just as soon as the wind dies down. So anyway, this is called Beaver Pond Outlet if you're looking for it in the AWOL. All right. Uh. The rocks have been coming and going. So hopefully I get some of this trail for just a little while, or at least until the next up. Well, we're over 30 miles in to Pennsylvania, excuse me, into New Jersey. That was a Freudian, huh? And we still got the, still got the rocks. Oh man. Been doing these now for five minutes or so. I'm supposed to start a descent down to the shelter any time now. Wow. This is a cool breeze for a moment. It's hot today. Well, there's water in here, which is a godsend. Uh, and a beer, but I don't drink it. So I will gift it forward to somebody. Okay, I think this is the, I think it's pronounced uh, Meshipakong shelter that's at the one three three zero point eight um it's the one that had apparently it had a it had a mountain dew and a pepsi and the two gals got it and she, they left the pbr for me but i don't drink it so i'll have to leave it for somebody else but uh, the water was good that was in the in the box there very much appreciated so thank you to whoever whoever takes care of that and puts that up there uh, nice tent site just down this little trail right there, but I think I'm going to double check the weather. Uh, I think I've got rain coming in, so not a great shelter, but a good overhang, which means staying dry if that's the case. So, uh, yeah, I think I might, uh, I need to double check the I think I'll double check the, the weather here and decide if I'm in a tent or or uh, just sleep in the shelter. Well I just had a visit from a trail angel by the name of Jim. Uh, one of the one of my subscribers. He did not uh, want to be on YouTube. Um, he'd come up earlier and he's the one that left the, the PBR and the the uh, Pepsi and the and the Mountain Dew in the box. And uh, he had uh, I guess had been down in the parking lot and when the other two gals uh, went down there they said hey the big bird you're looking for is up there so uh, he came back up and uh, brought some refreshment and I enjoyed a Mountain Dew and a Pepsi and that was awfully nice of you Jim so I'm gonna give a shout out to you and say thank you well done that uh, that really hit the spot after a, a long hot day 
and uh, thank you Red Jeep for the uh, the water in the in the bear box that was also a, a lifesaver here too so um, I'm yeah I'm gonna go ahead and, and sleep in the shelter tonight uh, based upon the, the forecast and we'll see if that's uh, maybe not uh, too conservative but uh, hey that's okay the uh, the bugs seem to be not quite as as bad here I heard that the, at the next shelter they're quite they're quite bad so glad I'm glad I'm, I'm staying here instead of going down to I think Rutherford so all right everybody good night we'll see you in the morning